Do you find yourself overwhelmed by the thought of making a career transition? I've been there and I understand the challenges you face. That's why I created the Career Compass, the ultimate guide for high achieving corporate women to make career transitions with ease. The Career Compass breaks down the decision-making process into five clear steps, helping you make savvy, empowered career decisions. Head over to karenfreeland.com forward slash career hyphen compass right now and download this invaluable resource. It's completely free and will get you on the path to a more fulfilling career. Go to karenfreeland.com forward slash career hyphen compass now. Welcome to Rock Your Reinvention, where I help high-achieving career women like you get unstuck, make your corporate exit strategy, and successfully transition to your next chapter. Hi, I'm your host, Karen Freeland, a certified life coach and corporate exit strategist. Whether you want to start a business, become a speaker, or something else, I'm here to give you the tools and strategies to shift your mindset, build your confidence, and take bold actions so you can rock your reinvention. Ready? Let's go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rock Your Reinvention. I have a great, great episode for you today that I know is going to give you the tips and tools you need if you are navigating the job market. I am joined by Patty Kilmer, who is a resume designer specializing in creating dynamic professional profiles and epic branding statements that stand out. And we definitely need that in today's job market. She has been writing and critiquing resumes for more than 30 years. And in 2021, she boldly stepped out and launched her own business, Epic Resume Design Plus. She's passionate about helping people, especially women in their career journey. And this is her second time on Rock Your Reinvention. So welcome back, Patty. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I know, me too. Last time you were on the show, it was before it was an official podcast, and it was um, shared inside of my Facebook group, Successful Working Women Rocking Reinvention. And you really dove into your whole transition and how you rocked your reinvention, basically, and started a business. But today, I really wanted you to come back and focus more on how you help people and just help alleviate some of the concerns about the job market. Because I talk to women all day long, clients and just women in general who are defeated, they're frustrated with the job market, they're feeling hopeless, and I really want to lighten some of their concerns and get them excited about being on the job market again. So I hope we can do that today. Absolutely. Awesome. I knew we could. So let's just start out with the basics of the resume. And I love that you describe it as a marketing piece. And that's really, I mean, I see it very similar, but can you explain what you mean by making your resume a marketing piece and how you help people create that? Your resume has to be your tool to sell your skills, right? Mm -hmm. So there's the marketing part of it, especially for a potential employer. They don't know you. So it's like any other type of marketing campaign, right? You need to promote that product or service and that product or service is you. So it's very important to sell yourself right up front, like within, you know, that first 10 seconds of reading your resume, because the average recruiter hiring manager only takes 10 seconds to read your resume. So it's very important to sell yourself in that level of dynamic and impactful way. You know, it's not just listing what what your duties are, but what are the positive outcomes? How did you lean in and have an impact on your role? Like, how what did you do to transform your role? That's yeah. really what it's about. Yeah, and I love that you're bringing that up. And this is very specific to women, but I remember taking a training back in my corporate days and it was for the women on the bench, right? Like they were kind of the next level of leaders coming in. And the woman who was training us kept talking about how women talk about inputs and they forget to talk about outputs. And so what she Mm -hmm. meant by that is I manage a $2 million budget. 
I oversee a team of 10 people and those are inputs. But what they're, we're not talking about usually as women is I drove a pipeline of $200 million or I use that budget to retain X number of customers that kept X number of dollars for the business. So we don't focus on the outcomes and the output of our work. Absolutely. The other one is also if you have a team of nine people, right? So what is part of that, right? It's not just managing, but it's leading. It is setting that employee up for the next step, right? Yeah. So also, I really encourage leaders of people like how many people did you mentor and how many of those folks actually got promoted? Or even if it's not a promotion, you got them ready for a different role. Right. Even if it financially yeah. it may be lateral, but what is your impact? Mentorship is a big impact and women are very good at that. They are good at that, but we don't talk about it a lot of times because we don't necessarily see it as something worth talking about, right? We're like, let me mm-hmm. just, again, go back to those roles and responsibilities of what I do on my day to day. And we forget about some of those things that are going to really set you as the candidate apart from everybody else who's got, you know, probably similar skills or they probably wouldn't be applying for that job. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's very important to define what those outputs were, right? Yeah. And it's it's really, it's the overall impact. Sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about storytelling because I have sort of heard this idea that, you know, your resume has to tell a story. And so I'm curious, like, how important is that? And what do you mean by storytelling? How does that work? Yeah. The, so the story is to tell that potential employer why they need you, Mm. right? So you have to explain, this is what you bring to the table. It's more than just bullet points on a document, right? So you have to increase your chances of going into the yes pile versus the no pile. And you do that by telling your story. So in part of that is curating this reflection of your professional history, right? Taken as a whole, it should demonstrate that you're the perfect person for the role and why. Mm -hmm. So we always have to remember what is the why? Why do they want you? So it's definitely important in that storytelling is in that professional summary that goes right on top of the resume. It should not be hidden anywhere. It should be bold, upfront, This is why you want me. Yeah, because you just said they have 10 seconds, right? We have 10 seconds to make an impact. And if we don't do it in 10 seconds, uh, we're probably in the no pile. We're, yeah. Yeah. This is not a time to be passive. It is a time to be bold. And remember, sometimes it's hard to talk about ourselves, right? Remember, it's a factual document. Remove the emotion. It's factual. Yeah. Great advice. And, you know, I've sent several of my clients to you and they have all been so happy working with you. I know one of the things that you have had to get some of them to embrace is taking off some of their older roles that maybe aren't as pertinent. So is there a hard, fast rule of like how far to go back or is it more about number of roles versus length of time? Do you have any guidance around that? It depends on what the role is, right? As a seasoned employee, no more than two pages. So what does that look like, right? So we want to capture your most dynamic impacts or roles that you've had in the past 10 years. But we don't want to show employee gap either, right? We want to show that for the last 20 plus years, you have been a dedicated um, employee. Mm-hmm. So what what I do is after 10 years, I will start saying, these are my previous highlights. Usually it's the role. Now, if you're a marketing, right, and you want to show progressive type of employment history, you know that you have climbed the ladder or you expanded your experience from this type, like this type of marketer to a total digital marketer, right? Mm -hmm. You would want to show that. And in those previous roles, one line, this is what I did, right? And it needs to be quantitative not just that you did it, like what did you do and and how did you do it? So it it depends on the role, right? Right. It depends on what needs to be done. You know, I also work with some scientists 
federal scientists on top of it, you should see their CVs. And again, it's highlighting, it's highlighting those significant impacts for their next role because their CVs can be 17, 20 pages long. Good grief. No one is reading that. Scientists may read that, but your hiring manager is not reading. Yeah, no, for so, sure. I mean, I was yes. far from a scientist and I'm telling you, if I got more than two pages on a resume, I was like, uh, I'm just like annoyed yeah. I have to read that much because we're so busy. So hiring managers, recruiters, well, especially recruiters, right? They don't have time. Yeah. When you have an applicant pool of 70 plus people coming in and you have to literally weed through this, you need to know who's going to be in, in the yes bucket very quickly. Yeah. Because they need to fill that role. Right. Yes. Yeah, we're losing money with open roles. So let's talk about this idea of a gap because I know so many people are laid off right now or have been impacted, especially in tech, which you and I have a, you know spent many of our years in career in. And so do you see having a layoff as an obstacle? Is this something they need to try to overcome or is it just kind of like no big deal and people are used to it now? As a workforce, right, it's not a big deal. People are starting to get used to, you know, this, you know, we, we have technology, you know, technology is taking the place of many of our roles, right? So how do we do that? Um, on a personal level, it is a big deal. It is uh, personal. People take it personal. There's a financial gap, right? There's all this stuff that goes on with layoffs, my suggestion is when someone gets laid off, what do you do? Like, what do you do in the meantime? That is polishing up your professional resume, mm -hmm. polishing up your personal brand, right? Increase your networking, go to those events, uh, even locally. You know, there's local organizations, there are chamber of commerces, there are job fairs. There are all different types of networking opportunities. Get out there and see what's out there, right? Yeah. So I just listened to a podcast from the World Economic Forum, and they were talking about 2025. And what does this look like globally? And we are in it. It's a global shift, yeah. right? What does that look like? And they're saying over 50% of all professions need to reskill and upskill to advance technologies. So even if it doesn't matter your role, but you need to understand how technology is integrated into that role mm -hmm. and how can you become more efficient and effective in your role using technologies. So it's, you know, it's like using your podcast platform, right? That's not my skill, but you know what? I want to be able to help people. So I'm going to learn the skill, you know, right. writing and speakers. And so it's very important to learn what that's all about. There's a lot to do when I, I call it in the meantime, there's yeah. a lot to do. I mean, upskilling right now, taking a training, right? Udemy or what, I mean, there's so many platforms out there where you can just go take a class and teach yourself LinkedIn. something, right? Yeah. And they're free. Yeah. LinkedIn, right? Because the one thing you want to avoid when you are laid off is that application burnout. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a client and they were saying, in the past four months, I, put, I applied to over 300 jobs. So, whoa, 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 let's back up, right? What do we need to do? What What is happening? Why are you doing this, right? Because it's emotional. Yeah. So we need to help calm that space down right. and be more focused on that niche. What is that perfect niche for you? So it's a process. So is it a big deal? It depends on where it is, but these are things that we can do in the meantime, right? Yeah, I to think it's like figure outable, right? It's kind of that idea that everything yes. is figure outable. Like I know so many people who have been laid off and it actually propelled them into bigger and better roles you know, they did not let it get them down. But I think a lot of times it's the mindset that you go in with. And if you have the mindset that this is a big setback, this is going to ruin me, I'm never going to make the same kind of money I made, then you're probably going to have a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. And most people should have plan B, C, and D in place. Mm. So in the event that a layoff can happen, right, you have a plan. People deal better when they have a plan. You know, some people take 
a couple of weeks off just to regroup, right? They yep. So you just, if you have a plan, it's an easier path moving forward. Yeah. I love that. So let's talk about some of the mistakes that women specifically are making on their resume when they're trying to get a new role right now. What what are they doing that you're like, oh, that's just instant no pile? So there's two. Don't use chat GBT to <laughs> drive your resume. It is very important to have a professional resume done with a real person. Yeah. I have three friends from our corporate world that are in different organizations now. They can identify that very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest way is there's no data. Data counts, right? So hiring managers like to see measurable results, yeah. right? In one line, what was the situation? What was the task? What was the action? What was the result? And you can do that in one line, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you need help to do that. So, and it's very important then the next step is write the resume to the audience. There's no such thing as a general resume. There's no such thing as a general cover letter because every company, every industry is unique, just like you are unique. Yeah. They're unique and you have to write it to your audience. And I guarantee that's why some people who are getting 300 rejection letters, if they're getting a response at all, it's because they are making it generic because who has time to update a resume 300 times for 300 different audiences, you know, like that's yes. very time consuming. So if we really get laser focused on the types of roles we want to go after and we don't play the spaghetti, throw it all at the wall, see what sticks game you're going to be a lot more successful. And I think that that actually helps your confidence because when you're getting 300 rejection letters, right, it's really easy to get down in the dumps. When you send out 10 targeted ones, you get some interviews, maybe it doesn't end up going through, but it's a lot easier to say, okay, I got rejected from three jobs than 400 jobs. Mm -hmm. And also that interview skill, you can never have enough interviews. Yeah. Right. So I tell that to people, especially if you've been in a corporate world, like I was in that corporate world for 25 years, you become that person. You don't know what the outside world looks like. So to have those interviews, oh, that is a skill that you can, you, know, you need to have those skills because they're going to come at you in different ways. You know, sometimes there's panels of seven people, seven different personalities, mm -hmm. seven different approaches, and you need to learn how to navigate through all that. So that is a win. Getting an interview is a win. Yeah, let's see that as a win. I think sometimes we forget we're just so focused on the end goal of getting the new job that we forget to see even getting an interview as a big win. So I love that perspective. Yeah, and it's, data is very important. When I come back and I say, oh, well, how many people did you support in an organization? You know, when I start asking for these numbers, especially with women, I get this... <sighs> you know, this feeling of challenge and I am challenging them because I need them to be successful in their pursuit of a new role, right? Right. Even when you're switching roles, you know, there's so many transferable skills that you're currently doing that can go into a different role, right? So I'm not proof of that too. I went from a the private sector to a public sector role. So you can take those transferable skills and you can plug them in. But again, it needs to be tailored to that role. Yeah. It's very important. And the other thing I was going to say, because you brought up interviewing and just how that is a great skill to have. And I think it also forces you, especially when you've been with a company for a long time, not to speak in acronyms and lingo. It forces you to actually talk industry language because you're not going to be able to walk in and start using all these acronyms from your company that aren't going to mean anything to anyone else. Or if they have a similar acronym, they're not going to be able to relate. They're going to be looking at you right. like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah, it's very important to open. There's the storytelling part. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's that storytelling and and what did you do? Yeah, you know what your impact was at the you know at the end. Yeah, of a, even projects, right? If you have a project manager, you know those are the resumes that really need to stand out because if you're 
project managers all have a budget. They all have a time span. They all know, right, what did all of that look like and what was your role to drive that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, one thing I want to just interject here, I'm curious what your thoughts are, is around tracking our performance appraisals. And if we get better, for those of us who are in a role right now but aren't thinking about making a move, if we get better at tracking our concrete results and the data in our performance appraisals, we already have a record that we can basically give Patty and go, look, here's all the things that I've contributed. Which of these do you feel is going to be most beneficial? Like we should already be doing that. And I don't know if women just aren't doing that. Their organization isn't asking for that kind of data or what, but it seems like it's, that would be an easy way to fix this issue. It is an easy way, but it's not happening. You know, when I say, well, what were your KPIs, right? So even though you may have KPIs at this high level, right, it all trickles down. Sure. So what are your KPIs to support that, right? I get crickets. But to support that, I have a client now, 30 years in corporate America, really didn't have a resume, but boy, she has dynamic appraisals. What, you know, it has those numbers, her support role, you know, the outcomes, the outputs, yep. you know, that whole, yeah. And you know what? She sent me those and we're plugging and playing it. Yeah. So it's very important if you do it in your daily work, it doesn't matter. You can digit, you know, digitize it. You can, I'm a writer. So everything goes in a notebook. But even as a small business, we do it too. What are our goals for next year? Right. Where were we, you know, it's all data. Yeah. It's good to know. It's good to have. Yeah. You want to yes. have that for sure. So we can stand out and make a big difference. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about the role that personal brand plays in landing your next corporate role. I have mm -hmm. seen some women come to me and they're like, I just can't get a job. And then I go look at their profile on LinkedIn. I'm like, I wouldn't hire you either. You've completely neglected your personal brand. Like, doesn't even yes. look like you're serious. Like, you really care. No, it's to the personal brand is a marketing tool, right? It allows to sell yourself in a very brief statement. This is what I do and this is why I do it. Mm -hmm. Or this is what I do for this type of outcome. It's very important. And that real estate and LinkedIn is prime real estate. Don't put your job in there. Nobody cares what your title is. It's what are you doing every day? So it helps differentiate yourself from the next person. It's attractive. Some of them are, especially... You know, you can see salespeople, they have a little bit of a goof, you know, it's a little bit funny. You want that. You want that hiring manager to go, I want to know a little bit more about that person, yeah. right? And that personal brand helps bring that forward where they're, they want to read that second page of your resume, right? Yep. They Or they want to look at the rest of your profile. So it's very important to really define what that looks like. And it changes. Mm -hmm. It can change, right? It also helps with that storytelling capability, yeah. right? It allows you to craft that compelling narrative that you need for your career journey. Yeah, I am mm -hmm. all about the personal brand. And I think it is one of the tools that has allowed me to build such a successful business and make the leap and the transition from corporate because I had that. So whether, you know, if you've just got laid off or you're just trying to figure out what you want to do next, it doesn't matter whether you're going to stay in corporate, move to the public sector like you did, or go start a business like we both did. You need a personal brand for whatever your next thing is. Yes. Yeah. And even in its, it's a foundational narrative, right? And you build on yeah. it. An example is I built my personal brand. And part of that is what is my color scheme? What is my, uh, is there an icon that I use, right? It's, it's the logo. It's mm -hmm. all a foundational type of narrative that 
defined your achievement. Yeah. And I highly recommend that people do not build off of the company brand that they work for, unless it's like me where I'm like a solopreneur, right? So I am my brand, but you know, when we worked in tech, a lot of people, you know, they would create handles on social media with the company name in it, or they would use the company colors. And I'm like, you're dead in the water because First of all, most recruiters and people are going to look at that and go, oh, they love their job so much. I'm not even going to bother reaching out to them. Or right. people are going to be like, oh, okay, you obviously are part of this organization. I don't know. Like, they're just not going to take you seriously like you're ready to move. So I just, and if you get laid off, then you're super screwed, right? Because now you got to rebuild your whole personal brand with something else. Yeah, your personal brand is, like I said, it's that marketing tool. If you incorporate who you're working for right now, that's not your brand. It's their brand, mm -hmm. right? So it may show loyalty, but like you said, it doesn't show that you are marketable. Yeah. Like you're not ready for that next role. Yeah. And it, there, it lacks your personality. And I think that that's what hiring managers want to see. I used to work for a guy mm -hmm. and he uh, would call it the Tokyo test. And he's like, would I want to fly to Tokyo and sit next to you on a, you know, 20 hour flight. And he's like, if he didn't want to, you were not going to be on his team because he would not enjoy working with you and spending as much time as he would with you. So I always thought that was really interesting. And I feel like with a good, strong personal brand, people will know really quickly whether they want to spend more time with you and go to Tokyo or not. You know, like, And if it's a no, then let's fail fast, right? And let's like move on. Let's move on. It also helps finding the right fit, not just for yourself, but for that company. Yeah. If that company is looking for that soft skill, mm -hmm. right? Or that dynamic input, and they see that in your personal brand, it's a no brainer, yep. right? It's yeah, we because it's all about having the right fit. We both know we've had experiences of not having the right fit. Yep. And it's uncomfortable, yeah. right? And it's miserable. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that it's a fit for sure. Okay, love that. Any trends that you're seeing right now in the job market that job seekers need to be aware of? Yes, increase your soft skills. Employers are looking for those technical academic skills, but they're firing on soft skills, especially for leaders, right? I just read an article that had a grid of, this is what boomers are, Gen X, millennials, right, Gen Z, and how we all are different in our approach, right? And leaders today have to be very adaptable and not treat everyone the same. They really need to get to know their people and what makes them tick, mm -hmm. right? What motivates that employee? So it's very important to call out those soft skills. So they're really high on the trend. Remote work is going away. Hybrid work is coming in. So uh, they're finding out there's like so much data out there that remote workers are working too hard, right? There's a, there's this, mm -hmm. they're lacking, they believe there's a balance, but they're not closing the door at the end of the day. They're working around everything else that's happening in the world. And it's becoming fragmented. The focus is becoming fragmented. So remote work is going away. Hybrid work is coming in. Ugh, I hate that as a person, as a mom who, you know, like lives by her work from home. Like, but I get the whole, they're actually working too hard because I talk to women all the time and they're like, barely do emails until 6 p.m. They go throw a dinner together. And then as soon as it's done, they're back up in their office and they're working again. It's like, we can't do this. No. And they're losing focus. Yep. Right. So instead of closing the door and leaving at the proverbial 5 p.m., right, they're in going home and spending that quality dinner time, quality family time and sport time and all this other family obligation time, they're becoming fragmented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're seeing that video interviews are becoming a thing. So um, I have not had experience with uh, video interviews. Um, I did help a client with a video portfolio. They're a digital marketer. And I'm going to tell you, talent is, is amazing out there. Yeah. And we're also seeing uh, what they call gig economy workers 
are coming up to. So say it's a small business and they only need someone for 20 hours. They're looking for that person doing that side job. Yeah. So that is very, that's in the top five and that's a global shift. Yeah. Right. So if you're looking for, you know, additional income or there's those folks that are entrepreneurs and they do better at doing different types of things, that is going to be a big trend. Also, as we know, trades. Mm -hmm. Trades are, we. there's a 47% gap in trades. So if you're a, a woman and you enjoy doing plumbing, electricity, HVAC, any of those big things, you can make high six figures wow. in these industries. And you don't need that formal education, you need that experience and certifications and licenses. So my husband's an electrician and I, he comes home very dirty. I don't think that would work for me, but (laughs) (laughs) yeah, but you can own the business, right? (laughs) That's true. Yes. Yes. And do all the things in his business that he, you know, the social and all that stuff. Yes. But there's a big shift in that too. Trades. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I mean, there's options, right? And I think that's the biggest thing that I always want women to see is we don't have to be victims of our circumstances. We can literally create whatever you want for the next phase of our career. The the door is open. The door is open. Yeah. The options are there. Yeah. You just got to take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. You got to explore them. You got to, that you have to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Always so good. So good. If you could say one thing to the woman listening who knows she wants to make a change, but doesn't know where to get started, what would you say? I would start with reflection, right? I think it's important to know where you're at, right? And if you don't know exactly where you want to go, start with the, so I, this, I'm going to tell you by personal experience what I did, right? So Definitely reflection. We may not always know what we want to do, but we know what we don't want to do. Start there. Start with the, this is a Mm no-go. And this is not for anything. It could be a person who's been a people leader for two decades and they're ready for a change and they no longer want to be a people leader. Okay, that's a no. You already know that. So let's shift and what does that look like, right? So what are the don'ts and then what is what you can compromise and then i oh i ask this question too if money was not a factor what would you like to do yep right so that helps open up that reflection and taking time right you have to take time carve it out it may look like a sunday afternoon with a glass of wine and you're just writing it out, yep. you know, or just brainstorming to yourself. But that's where I would start. I would start with reflection. We're all different in our needs and watch and they also change. Yeah, for sure. So I go through this all the time. Yeah, it's smart. It's not one and done, right? And so if if you don't mm-hmm. have the grab the life by the dreams, uh, official workbook and reflection journal, You should get that because I literally walk you through some of those questions for that internal reflection that Patty just talked about. So, you know, you can always find that at karenfreeland.com forward slash dreams if you want to get a copy of the workbook and you can walk through some of those exercises yourself. This has been so awesome, Patty. You have given us so much good information today for those of us tackling the job market. And I would love to know, and then I have a special surprise, so don't click out yet, but I would love to know where can people find you to get your resume services? So I have a website. They can reach me at epicresumedesign.com or they can reach out to me directly. It's patty at epicresumedesign.com. So those are the best ways to reach me. Um, If they want to send a text message, I can be reached at 856-889-6273. I love that. And it's Patty with a Y, -Y. Mm P-A-T-T-Y. Absolutely. Okay. So if anyone decides that they would like to get career coaching between now and December 31st of 2024, when you sign up for career coaching, I am going to gift you a resume with Patty. 
That is a $350 value, and that is going to be yours complimentary, my gift, my holiday gift to you. If you decide to get a six-month coaching package or more, I will gift you a resume with Patty. Okay. And that offer is good through the end of the year. You just mentioned this podcast episode and you let me know, and I will gift that to you. Okay. That is my holiday gift at thanking you for being a listener here. And I just, I'm really love Patty's work. And I know that you're going to land the dream job if you work with her. So I would love to do that for you if you're interested. And of course you can go book a call, karenfreeland.com in the top right-hand corner on my website. Just click the book a call link and we'll get together talk about, you know, what your big goals are, what might be getting in the way, and then we'll make a plan for going forward together. So take advantage of that. You got me and Patty for the cost of just me. Perfect. Yeah. Anything else you want to say before we wrap up today? No, thank you very much for this opportunity. I love these conversations. Um, I'm always, you know, I love helping people. The industries that I've learned about, and it's just been very fascinating for me. So very enjoyable. Thank you very much for including me. Oh, you're so welcome. We love what you do. Keep helping women land their dream job and get paid what they're worth and all that good stuff because ladies, we have so much to give. So sometimes we just got to get out of our way. We got to invest in ourselves. We got to get the right tools and support. And that's when things really start to click in. So don't forget, go to karenfreeland.com, book your call, and I will gift you a resume by the end of the year, 12, 31, 24, for you to work with Patty. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're inspired to take action by committing to one of the tips or strategies we talked about in today's episode. If you want more accountability and support, I've got your back. Book a complimentary empowered exit strategy call today. Visit karenfreeland.com to learn more and book your 45 minute session. Until next time, stay fabulous.